Here we go. So, Geist uh, is a Soul Calibur player, but also is playing some Tekken 8. So, he says here, I think the way Tekken 8, Tekken has been running their world tour is incredibly uncompetitive friendly and is needlessly overmanaged. Some decisions have been bordering on messing with competitive integrity and others have been downright, just downright lazy. A lot of cut corners here for sure. They can't be asked to either balance stages or assess the overall volatility of the level of certain stages and assign a method of a pick ban for competitors. Let the roulette decide! Exclamation point. Who cares if Drag or Azu gets 80% wall to wall on underground arena? The competitors? Who cares about them, man? They're just players, they can deal with it. Why step when you can duck and launch? Yeah, that's I, I love that last part because it's it's the exact logic that people were upset about when they tried to make more of Kazuya's options from like a crouch dash or I don't know if it's a wave dash. They they started making shit randomly track. And they're like, dude, like why is this low tracking? The slow's never been tracking. And they're like, well, why would you ever duck it? I mean, why would you ever step it if it's low and you know that you can just duck it? Oh, uh, like just crouch block, idiot. That's the kind of um, mental fatigue that players go through with their own competitive circuits and the people who design around them. What he's getting at here, the part that the part that gets me, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull over to mine because I also I think I like quote tweeted him. I absolutely quote tweeted him. I know I did. Let me go to it. There it is. Um, and the reason why is because I'm a firm believer in a pick band system. There was previous Tekken World Tours where it wasn't randomized for stage. You actually got to pick stage. And there's levels to it. There's levels to why people like stage picks or don't like stage picks. And they're all very easily solved. And a game's already done it. And 8 Funds down there says it. He says, TBH, I like picking more than random. I don't understand why the SC folks fucking don't. But a stage band system like Melee would be so fucking good. Like, that's literally all it takes, is not just having a stage pick, but also having a stage band. I remember once, I was mentioning in a streamer's chat, we were, I think he was watching the Tekken World Tour Finals. It was Sejam, as a matter of fact. Uh, he was watching, like, the Tekken World Tour Finals, or something major, something very big for Tekken 7. And someone won on an infinite stage, the opponent, and they won first. They it random to infinite stage for the first game, and that's how Tekken used to work, because you would random for the first stage, and then competitor... That lost could either change character or change stage, but not both. You could change character and random stage, or change stage and stay the same character, right? And he lost the first game, and then he hits random, wins the next game. No, hits, uh, hits a different stage. Like, it says, no, screw this, I'm picking stage. Picks a different stage, I don't remember which one it was. And he, he lost, I mean, he won there. And then the other player, I believe it was a... I want to say it was like a Zafino or a Kunimitsu player. I can't remember off the top of my head. Essentially, they every game they won was won on an infinite stage. And I said, this is why we need a pick band system. And Mr. Streamerman Seijam, unfortunately, I have to use him as a bad example here. Only because he doesn't play a lot of other... He doesn't play a lot of platfighters competitively, especially like Melee or the, the Smash games, where they do this. He said, well, if he just banned Infinite Zero, then you would just go to the Snow Infinite stage, right? That doesn't really change or fix anything here. And it exactly fixes things here. Because you would just establish that all Infinite stages are one pick or one ban. It's very simple. It's very easy. And it was, like, not something that I could explain through Twitch chat very eloquently to another human being who has a, who has a brain and understands fighting games to a degree that... A lot of people don't, so I don't fault him for that. It was just like a quick reaction assessment of, well, there's other stages on the roster that do the same thing. Duh, stupid. Well, that's why we pick and ban certain stages and group certain stages together even in a Smash sense, right? That's kind of how that works. Um, and I, I want to say that Soul Calibur has the same issue where some stages are very similar. And someone already brought that up, so I'm going to go here. Boop. And Ron the Triard, very solid competitive level, Soul Calibur player, top 8 at multiple online events, top 8 at even a few of the offline events that he's been able to travel to. So we'll look at what he said. He says, I've been saying this for a while now, the issue is that Soul Calibur, there's like 6 of the same stage. Tekken has a similar, has a similar issue as the Tekken 7. There are 3 or 4 infinite stages in Tekken 7, and there's a good few 24 by 24s in Tekken 8. You just pick or ban them all as one stage. It's that simple. 
And the reason why I mentioned that is because I think I went over like a thought experiment of what stages could be banned and what stages could be neutrals and then counter picks, right? Because you would you would you would start you would pick a starter to start, right? And the way it works is because you have to you pick a starter. There's certain stages that are classified as starters. They're not like too heavily weighted in most matchups. Most matchups, they're like the most even or the most neutral stage you can think of. That like both players are at a significant, like neither player is at a significant disadvantage just by picking the stage. Because there are stages that, if, in in a traditional sense, fighting against Ivy on Ostrinsberg fucking sucks. Fighting against Rustdown characters on Garoth stage fucking sucks because of where it puts you on the stage, how close you are to the walls, how much space there is to move around. Right? That's just how the game works. Fighting Nightmare on any of the small, no wall stages just fucking sucks. Not really much you can do about it. So those stages would never be considered neutral. They would be considered counter pick. Right? That is the way those would work. You would pick like Shrine of uh y Urius or whatever the fuck it's called the Sophitia stage is like a starter Setsuka stage as a starter and I don't know probably like one other as a starter maybe like fuck I can't think of a stage off the top of my head that would be uh, fine as a starter maybe the great the the windswept plains or whatever the one where there's one wall and the rest is open because you both start with the ring edge to your back but there's a whole lot of space to work with right that same system can be used for Tekken and should be used for Tekken I think that if you look at how the game is designed, it's designed more now as like a spectator sport and like, ooh, pretty color go burr than it ever has been. Not only because there's balcony breaks and floor breaks, now they've added DOA style things like floor blasts. Floor blasts are very DOA. That, that like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, whoa, this looks like a DOA stage interactable. That's so cool. But I think with that comes certain inherent disadvantages for some characters on stages while other characters have a better advantage on the stages generally you just make those counter picks but somehow try to find a way to make them legal there's probably some stages that legitimately in tekken 8's stage list would just be banned in a competitive sense if they wanted to uphold competitive integrity to the highest degree and i think that's where people start to lose interest in this system is because they don't want to lose a lot of the a lot of the spirit that Tekken has, right? Even Soul Calibur or DOA. You don't want to lose all that spirit. You don't want to lose too many stages and really feel like you're playing a more sterile and volatile game. But fuck that. Competitors probably want a more sterile game. They want a less volatile, swingy game. They want, like, a stable competitive orbit that they can prove their prowess in. And I'm inclined to agree that the best way to do that is to remove some of the stages from the stage list because they're just too ham. They're too crazy. Or, and... Create a pick and ban system for the stages. Maybe not for this year's World Tour because it's already too late. It's already going on. Duh. But I think more people should bring this up and talk about it for Tekken before it's too late and they just continue to run it all as random. The reason why I want to say it gets run as random because unfortunately there's extremes on both ends. The reason why I believe it was run on random is because they don't want people to pick the biggest stage in the game and run away forever or always pick the smallest stage in the game and force interactions over and over against characters who aren't good at forcing those interactions, right? They want you to have to play around the stage the same way you would play around your character, but you're adding an, an, a level of RNG on top of playing around your opponent's character. Instead of just making it so that if you win on a stage, we'll talk about that in a second, you can't go back to it, which is the, the easiest solution for this, right? The solution would be, you won on infinite, okay, you can't even go back to their evidence stages, idiot, like, learn how to play on a different stage, which will also show your competitive prowess. They call that, in Smash, Dave's Stupid Rule. There's two versions of it, there's Dave's Stupid Rule, and there's Dave's Stupid Rule Modified. Dave's Stupid Rule Modified is you can't win on the same stage twice back to back, and Dave's Stupid Rule is you cannot win twice on the same stage unless it is your opponent's pick. Cool? Understood? Right? That makes sense to everybody? The reason why I bring that up is because Smash Ultimate has the exact opposite issue. If you watch one of the last major tournaments for Smash Ultimate, I think it was called the Luminosity Invitational. Shoutouts to Shattuck, a Texas player, won that, beating Sonics, one of the best players in Smash Ultimate right now, cementing himself as one of the best players in Smash Ultimate. So shoutouts to Shattuck for that, a Texas player. I've seen him grow up from like a little kid. He came to some of my events. Okay, some of my players may have bullied him. 
and I want to apologize for that. But he's a cool kid. Anyways, back to what I was getting at. If you watch the grand final set of that, you'll see that the entire grand finals was played on one stage. One stage. The entire grand finals of that entire upper echelon, highest level of competitive play for Smash Ultimate was played on one stage. Pokemon Stadium 2. And the reason why that happened is because the stage list for Smash Ultimate is so limited, got so reeled in, there's so few stages that they want to consider competitively viable, that a lot of times, players just default to the green stage with the fucking red and white Pokeball on it. What up, Benji? Right? They don't really think of stages as a means to an end to lessen the burden of a matchup. They just think of them as, well... I mean, I've, I'm used to PS2, haha, <laughs> it's what I see 85% of my games. Someone did the math on it, I think it was like 82% of games in um, top 8s were played on Pokemon Stadium or something. And that probably didn't help, having a 9 game set or a 10 game set on Pokemon Stadium probably didn't help, right? Um, I'm going to add, yikes, unfortunate. And I, I bring that up. For the sole purpose of there's there's the opposite end of the spectrum where we don't want to boil the game down too much and remove too many stages that could be considered viable because they have like something that's slightly off about them right like underground arena i'm gonna say underground arena is not a very fair stage pretty small 24 by 24 there's wall blasts on four sides most of the top tier characters can get you to said wall blast really easily and then can get a piece of Oki because of like a weird splat knockdown at the end. To get themselves, I think Geist mentioned he said 80%, but he might have been being hyperbolic. Ozzy, Senna, and Dragonoff, if they get that round start, they're going to get themselves a nice little cool 70% combo. Just because of the fact that, well, we're on Arena Underground. You start 12 meter, 12, 12 away or 10 away from that wall. 10 units or 12 units away from that wall. Get fucked, dude. I, I opened you up. Try same thing with a character like Song Mina. Song Mina makes, uh, I'll mention this for Soul Calibur, Song Mina makes a lot of the stages in the game one, one interaction rounds. Right? If she has meter, there's a lot of instances where having one bar of meter for Song Mina, if she hits you anywhere on some of the smaller stages in the game, it is just immediately a ring out. Not immediately a wall, not immediately a wall blast or a floor blast, no. This is Soul Calibur, bitch, we have those. It's an immediate ring out. Pretty strong. And it, it feels brighter, it feels smarter, it feels more competitively minded to make it so that the competitors are allowed to take away that aspect of a character's toolkit to weaken them in game two, game three, game four, and game five situations, instead of randoming it, and then sometimes you just get the same stage. I've watched Tampa Never Sleeps. I've watched these events where you see people random the stage, like they're like, oh, they're, oh, they're gonna hit random and they're gonna go back, and they get the same fucking stage. Random is random. Random is bad. You don't random anything in competitive play. It doesn't make any sense to me. It feels wholly... What's the word I'm looking for here? Um, it's tone deaf. It feels wholly tone deaf when it comes to the competitive spirit of fighting games. The only time where sta stages don't matter is in 2D fighters, outside of weird, quirky 2D fighters like Mortal Kombat and Injustice, because they have stage interactables and stuff. Generally, stages don't matter in those games, but in 3D fighters, they matter to a huge degree because there's so many different variables that make characters stronger on certain stages. I already mentioned the Song Mina example. I already mentioned Ivy on Australianberg. She's got the biggest normals in the game, she's got the biggest moves in the game, and she's got one of she's got a really strong backdash. It's a huge stage. She can run away from you forever. That's essentially that's essentially what it is. If you're using a short range rushdown character or a mid range character. You don't really want to fight Ivy on a Strangeberg. You don't want that. I'm free from ad hell. Hello? Hello, we're just talking about stage picks and how they could be a viable change for Tekken 8's future. We had them for one season of Soul Calibur 6 because the World Tour had started and then it quickly was canceled because of COVID, unfortunately. But because the World Tour rule set was what we continued to use, at least for that year, we had stage picks. The only thing we're missing in this full overarching strategy is a stage ban system because if you have stage picks the players are going to do what they should do this the players are going to do what they want to do and they're going to go back to the stage that suits them the suits them the most in each matchup 
So if you put them on a stage that's too good for them, this is J Sabs, this is why I play Smash and commentated Smash and you don't. We'll get to that. I've already mentioned it. If you put a character on a stage who's too good and you try to random your way off of it and they get it again, that is an actual buy. You you that is a buy, that is free. GG's, sometimes you just gotta hold that, right? But instead, if there was a pick ban system, not only would you be able to counterpick stages as the loser, you would then not be able to win on that stage again more than likely because your opponent's now going to ban it. Your opponent is going to take your best stages and ban them, or they'll have bans at the beginning and they'll have pick and bans throughout the set. There's enough stages, especially in 3D fighters, even if you kind of conglomerate some of them together, like the stages that are about the same size, no walls on all four sides, and you have to put them together. That works better if there aren't like five stages that are the same. You just group those all together. We we already talked about this. There's three fucking infinite stages in Tekken 8. In Tekken 7. There's two very large stages in Tekken 8. Yeah, there's two very large stages in Tekken 8. You group, you group those as big stage. Big stage, one group. You want on big stage? Can't go back to big stage. Get fucked. You want on no wall stage? Uh, so, what is it? The the Keelix stage or the desert stage, which I consider the awesome stage, but I know it's not. D desert stage or temple? His little thing? You can't go back to it again. Or your opponent bans it. One or the other, right? There is ways to create a working system for this. The the forest stages that are all walls would randomly be the first stage. You would probably do a pick and ban. You would probably pick from a set of neutrals. You would probably decide how to make certain stages. You would probably pick the, the most neutral three stages in the game. Three. You'd pick the most three neutral stages in the game, and you'd say, rock, paper, scissors, all right, first ban. And then they get second ban, and then you j you go to the third stage. So if one stage is marginally better for your opponent, marginally better, out of the three neutrals, you ban it. Then your opponent bans the one that's, well, out of the two, which one is slightly better for my opponent? They ban that one, and then you go to the truest of neutral stages. That's how you would do it. That's how they do it in Super Smash Bros. And it works, it works great. It's an amazing system. It's just that we as, my problem with that, go ahead. It's just that we as fighting game players are so not used to it that we don't really know how to make this system work. Some stages, you won't see a lot of them? Yeah, yeah, see, I also love stages, but I'm not a competitive player. Uh, I'm just some fucking scrub who talks into the microphone. No, it doesn't work in Smash. Did you see how many stages are removed from, you want me to show you the competitive rule set for Smash Ultimate? Let me show you something. No, let me show you something. Let me show you something. I want to show you something. Stage legality in Smash Ultimate. Battlefield. Small Battlefield Final Destination. Yoshi Story is infrequently legal. Pokemon Stadium 1, infrequently legal. You just pick two. Warrior Well, we'll go with the ones that we know are like fully legal, right? So, Town and City, Alos, Hollow Bastion, Smashville, Pokemon Stadium 2, Final Destination, Battlefield, and Small Battlefield. Look how many stages they lose. No, I mean the competitive stages are fairly similar, and that's the issue. That's where the that's where the extreme on the other end is a problem. Where if the competitive stages are too similar, then it creates homogenization and a sterile playstyle. Tekken and Soul Calibur don't have those issues. So because they don't have similar stages at all, there are actually yeah, there are actually stages that work significantly better for one character more than another, so there's still an actual triangle in the system. Smash Ultimate fucked that up big time because they wanted the game to be so top player focused or heavily top player focused to the point where a lot of top players end up just playing on Pokemon Stadium 2 because they're like, well, 83% of my games are going to be on Pokemon Stadium 2 and I'm like, fuck it. I'll do a full grand final set where the entirety of the grand final set is played on one stage. That's bad. That's also bad. That's the that's the extreme on the other end. The extreme on the end that, that unfortunately happened in Tekken 8 or Tekken 7 that probably led to the situation is that Someone just picked the same stage over and over every time they had stage pick. Tried it hard did not to be a competitive game? Yeah. And they still did it. And the reason, the, how they did it was just like picking a bunch of stages that were 
really sterile, right? There's some stages that I think could be legal, and they just didn't make them legal. Frigate Orpheon, WarriorWare, I've mentioned this before. We don't have to talk about it. I'm not worried about Smash. Right now, I'm worried about 3D Fighters, right? There's a few stages in Tekken 8 stage list that I'm like, this shit should be banned. I think I made a stage a pick and ban tier list for Tekken 8 a while back, and like, I think it's solid enough that we can go over it really fast real quick before we end this like talk segment. I put it on here somewhere. And I think, like, even now, I think there's probably a better way to do this. I think, like, in my head, I'm like, yep, I fucked up. I could have made this even better. Right? And I put Bannable here because, like, you could, like, probably never see these stages and it'd be fine. The only reason why Yakushima and Underground are in Bannable is because they're the same. Like, Coliseum is basically the same stage as Yakushima. You just pick one, right? Uh, you might want to swap these. Maybe Coliseum is a little bit smaller. So you take, pick Coliseum over Yakushima. Duh, right? Uh, and then... This is the city. The city is the exact same fucking stage. Why would you have that again? Kali in the floor break stage? Yeah, you wouldn't want that as, like, a starter. No, that's this one. That's this one. This is the one with the... That's why I put it under counter pick, right? The Lee stage, I put it under counter pick. I put this under neutral, probably could have been a starter, right? Counter pick for sure. Bottom left? Bottom left? I don't know left. Oh, yeah, this right here. We're pointing at it. Yeah, I was pointing out that one right there. Right, like, so, I, I've already kind of made a, a stage pick. Since it's not great. Like, I'm sure this could use refining, and if someone with a better brain for the game and understood more about matchups and the intricacies of how characters want to play on certain ranges in the screen, this could absolutely be tweaked. This could absolutely be tweaked, and it could still be a viable way that we see most of the stages in the game. Like, if you look at the stages that I removed... You started last month? Nice. Nice. G congratulations on starting Tekken 8. If you look at most of the stages that are removed, there's not that many. There's still a, a healthy amount of stages, legal, and if there's a pick and ban system, you're still more than likely going to see a lot of them depending on matchups, but just not all in the same set. Now, in Smash, th this is not, this is exactly the opposite issue, where they just stripped it down to completely you know, sterileness. There's like nothing here. There's nothing of substance. WarioWare should be legal. Yoshi Story should probably be fucking legal. Frigate Orpheon should probably be fucking legal. Like, there's no reason why those stages can't be legal, and they're just, there's not. Because, I don't know, we went too far in one direction. This is, this is a solvable issue. And it's solvable simply by thinking more about competitive integrity over who and what is shuffled onto the screen every 10 seconds. Like, yes, we want everyone to see all the stages, but if you want everyone to see all the stages, we'll go back to we'll go back to what Guy said. Because personally, I don't really care if we don't see all the stages as long as it's competitively viable, right? He says, who cares if Azu or Drag wall combo you for 80% on underground arena wall to wall? The competitors, who cares about them, man? They're just players. They can deal with it. That's really bad. That's awful. So they could either do what Geist mentioned and balance the stages and make them less volatile for competitive play so every stage can be legal, or take matters into their own hands. Anyways, this is a long like rant slash theory discussion of 3D fighters. Again, I don't know how I have to how this comes up so often. Like it comes up on my timeline and I mention it because I'm a big fan of pick and ban systems in everything, right? Whether that be for League of Legends. Uh, champions, whether that be for stages in Smash. I'm fine with it. I like the pick and ban system, especially when it comes to stages for 3D fighters, but it's something we've never used. And I would love for more TOs and higher-ups to really think about it and think about what it could do for the competitive theme and the competitive sphere. Because I think overall it's a net positive in comparison to using random stages. It has its kinks, it has its quirks, but so does just letting players pick the stage willy-nilly over and over even if they've already won on the stage either stage picks with dsr or pick and bands easiest ways to make the game feel more competitive at its highest levels of play without completely ruining the balance of stages as they're already designed anyways this has been Pete thuggish ranting again Talking about stages in 3D Fighters and how we could have a pick and bend system. Signing out and saying peace.